The chapters in this module deal with a very important topic of information security. You hear about hacking all the time today, whether it's uh, hacking to try to sway an election or perhaps a retailer having millions of credit card uh, numbers stolen. Hacking and hack attempts are almost a daily occurrence. The chapters in this module cover some very important things companies should think about uh, when they're thinking about planning for information security and contingency plans if uh, they indeed are attacked. Hacking is growing and changing as fast as technology is changing, which is very, very quick. Because of the Internet, computers are no longer isolated. Almost all of them are connected in some way, and being connected means that those computers are at risk. As this slide states, hacking is changing. While there still might be a few teenagers out there playing around, hacking is now big business and often has governments uh, at, at its core. Information security is not often taken as seriously in some organizations as it should be. This leads to being even more at risk and making the potential payoffs even higher for the hackers. Another huge factor that uh, affects information security vulnerability is the Internet of Things. Almost everything in your home, whether it's your th thermostat, your baby monitor, your refrigerator, your garage door, all of those can be connected to the Internet, especially via a smartphone. And if it can be connected to the Internet, it can also be hacked. Well, there are two main types of threats that organizations and companies need to take seriously, and the first one is the unintentional threat. An unintentional threat is usually the result of carelessness. The second is an intentional threat. That's an intentional intrusion, hack, or even theft. This slide gives us some examples of intentional threats, and they include carelessness, uh, somebody just leaving a computer around and it gets stolen, uh, opening a questionable email and uh, you know clicking on the link and uh, opening up a virus, careless internet surfing, not being careful of where they are, poor password strength, and carelessness in the office. That could include just uh, leaving your office door open or putting sticky notes uh, on your computer with all of your passwords listed there. Intentional threats also have a, a large variety, and this slide lists some of those. Um, you know, espionage, um, in many cases by government uh, entities, trespass, uh, extortion, theft of equipment, coming in and stealing things, identity theft, and also software attacks. And we'll talk a, a little bit more about some of these as we go. It's important for companies and organizations to realize that threats can come from either outside or inside the organization. And uh, companies need to have policies and procedures to combat both of these sources of threats. One of the hardest threats to prepare for is the threat of uh, social engineering. And social engineering is when the uh, perpetrator uses their special social skills to get people to think they're somebody that they're not. Now, this works with information security, but it's also an issue when you check into a hotel and uh, somebody calls you right up and says, hey, you know, we, we had a problem with your credit card. Uh, we need to get that credit card information again. So social engineering is very, very, very difficult to avoid, and it's very, very dangerous. And one of the best ways to avoid this is through proper employee training. One of the types of threats that we discussed earlier was a software attack. And a software attack is uh, typically a remote attack, uh, but it requires that the user actually do something to install it on the computer. In some of these terms, you've heard a virus. Uh, that's a computer code that performs malicious actions by attaching itself to another computer program. There's a worm. Uh, that's an additional computer code that performs malicious actions and will replicate or spread itself, uh, trying to infect other computers on the network. And then there's phishing. Phishing attacks is when uh, the individual uses deception to try to acquire sensitive information such as, uh, you know, perhaps even your password by masquerading as an official looking email that might say, hey, this is from the IRS or uh, some, you know, a bank. And then there's spear phishing. And a spear phishing is, is a targeted attack uh, in spear phishing, the perpetrators try to find out as much information as they can and include that personal information in the uh, phishing email to say, okay, this really must be a legitimate um, request for the information. There are also software attacks that do not require the user to do anything, and one of those is a denial-of-service attack. In a denial-of-service attack, the attacker sends so many information requests to a uh, web server that it actually takes the server down and crashes it. 
We mentioned threats coming from both inside and outside uh, the organization, and this category of software attacks are done by programmers, so this would be internal. And uh, specifically, these are programmers that uh, leave things um, on the program that they're developing. That they These threats include a Trojan horse, and uh, that's a program that hides in the computer program and it reveals itself later uh, when it's activated by a specific date or time. And there's a back door. This is a, a password that's only known by the, the programmer. He leaves a him himself or herself a way to get back in and access the data and then there's a logic bomb uh, that's a segment of computer code that is embedded within within the organization's existing computer programs which is designed to destroy uh, data at a certain date or time and one other category of threat is called alien software and uh, some of the things that we would see in this category are adware um, adware is software that causes pop-up advertisements to appear all over your screen, especially when you're on the, on the internet. Spyware uh, collects personal information, including passwords, if it uh, is set up to do that. Uh, then there's spamware, and uh, that actually uses your computer, especially your email system, to send out uh, spam emails. Well, as you read this chapter and uh, view the slideshow, hopefully you get the idea that uh, the threats of uh, information security threats are, are very, very, very serious, and organizations should take them seriously. Now, even with the best controls, there's you know always going to be somebody that's going to get in, it seems. But some of the specific things that companies and organizations can do are physical controls. That would be locks, uh, making sure that the doors are locked, um, you know, badges and uh, alarm systems and uh, access control, which would be only people that have the right password and authentication can actually get into the computer system. And then, of course, we have communication controls, which would include things like firewalls, uh, spyware systems, anti-malware systems, and encryption. When it comes right down to it, uh, information security is actually an individual responsibility, and uh, there are some things that you can do to uh, uh, safeguard your information security and especially your privacy, and one of those very simple things is just to use very strong passwords and change them now and then, and as we said before, don't put sticky notes on your computer that have those passwords. You might consider adjusting the privacy settings on your computer so that it doesn't send out so much information. Uh, you can use your anonymous uh, your web browser's anonymous surfing ability and of course uh, if you don't want to have your search history made available to all the advertisers that have cookies on your computer you can erase your google search history 